Are all calories created equal? The question I'm asking is, are all calories equally fattening? And the answer is no. A calorie of brownies is not the same as a calorie of kale. It's just not. That's just common sense. This is Dr. Jason Fung. He, along with many other doctors, like to argue that calories don't matter when it comes to fat loss. Instead, they suggest the only thing that matters is food quality. In this video, I'm going to explain why he, as well as many other doctors, are completely wrong about this topic. The main argument against calories is that it does not account for food quality. As Dr. Jason Fung said, a calorie from a brownie is not the same thing as a calorie from kale. It's just common sense. But this is fundamentally not true. It sounds appealing because we can all agree that eating vegetables is nutritionally better for you than eating brownies. I don't disagree with that statement at all. The issue is that we're confusing calories with the nutritional quality of food, which are two completely different things. It doesn't have to be calories or food choices. The reality is that both variables are related and both matter for weight loss. One of the reasons this confusion exists is because people don't really understand what a calorie is. So what is a calorie? A calorie is not a physical thing. It's simply just a unit of measurement. We measure mass and distance using units of measurements like pounds and meters. Calories are no different. They're just a unit of measurement for energy. Let's say you eat a food that contains 100 calories. It means that your body received a certain amount of energy equivalent to 100 calories. By definition, calories have absolutely nothing to do with the quality or the nutritional value of the food that you eat. It's simply just a way to measure how much energy that food provides. So why do calories matter for fat loss? It comes down to a concept that we call energy balance, which is the relationship between how much energy you get from your food and how much energy your body expends. Your body requires a certain amount of energy every day because your body expends energy to keep you alive, maintain basic organ function, keep your heart beating, regulate your body temperature, and to move around. If you consume less energy from your diet than the amount of energy that your body expends, your body isn't receiving the amount of energy it requires from your food. So what happens? Well, your body still needs to get that energy from somewhere. So it's going to tap the stored energy sources like body fat to get the required energy, which results in weight loss. So weight loss is just a byproduct of your body metabolizing fat to make up for the energy it's not getting from your diet. The exact opposite is true for weight gain. If you eat more energy than your body requires on a given day, then your body's not gonna waste the excess energy, but instead, it's gonna store it as body fat, which will result in weight gain. This process of gaining or losing weight is independent of the actual foods you choose to eat. I'll explain this later in the video. You can theoretically gain weight by eating healthy foods, like apples and spinach, although it's gonna be very difficult because these foods don't really contain that many calories. At the same time, this also means that you can lose weight by eating quote unquote shitty foods like brownies and cookies if you simply don't eat that much. If you don't believe me, check this article out on CNN. Mark Hobb, a professor of nutrition at Kansas State University, lost 27 pounds by eating strictly ultra processed foods like chips, sugary snacks, and cereals by tracking his caloric intake. Now, by no means do I recommend that anybody takes this approach to lose weight, but it does prove the point that calories do in fact matter for weight loss. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to weight loss, it's not calories or food choices, it's both. We should focus on eating an overall healthy diet because the foods we choose to eat can influence how many calories we consume. Let's take a look at some research. This study published in Cell compared the effects of consuming a diet mainly composed of ultra processed foods to a diet composed of mainly unprocessed foods. The participants were instructed to consume food ad libitum, which means they ate as much as they wanted. The meals given to the participants were matched for calories presented, energy density, macronutrients, sugar, sodium, and fiber. And the participants included in the study were weight-stable adults. At the end of the study, energy intake was significantly greater in the ultra-processed diet group compared to the unprocessed diet group, with the excess of calories mainly coming from an increase in carbohydrate and fat consumption and not protein. Overall, participants in the ultra-processed diet group gained about two pounds on average, and those in the unprocessed diet group lost about two pounds on average. So in a sense, food choices do matter very much for weight loss. However, it's because food choices influence how many calories you consume and not because specific foods inherently cause weight gain or weight loss. The image on the screen is showing the satiety index of commonly consumed foods, and we can see that foods like chips, cookies, and chocolate bars are all the way on the left and have lower satiety scores, whereas foods like steak, fish, and fruit are all the way on the right and have much higher satiety scores. Again, 
You can technically lose weight by eating mainly processed foods like chips and ice cream, but you might have a very hard time adhering to your caloric targets because these types of foods are not very satiety promoting. In other words, they don't do much to keep you full, and you and I both know that if you're hungry all the time, you're gonna cheat on your diet and you're gonna go over on your calories. The goal for anyone attempting weight loss is to make it feel as easy and as seamless as possible, which can be accomplished by consuming foods that are gonna help you feel full and satiated. Here are some general dietary rules that will help promote satiety and reduce hunger. One, follow a high protein diet since protein is the most satiating macronutrient and has the highest thermic effect of foods. Two, Consume mainly whole and processed foods, since again, they tend to be less calorically dense than processed foods and they help keep you full. And three, reduce the number of liquid calories you consume from things like juice, smoothies, and alcohol, since liquid calories don't do much to improve satiety. Instead, just eat the whole fruit rather than having the juice, and if you're in the mood for something sweet, choose a zero calorie alternative like a diet drink. Of course, there's other benefits of consuming an overall healthy diet filled with whole and processed foods besides aiding in weight loss. These foods also contain more nutrients like fiber, vitamins, minerals, compared to highly processed foods. That being said though, there's nothing inherently unhealthy about processed foods either, besides the fact that they're really delicious and easy to overconsume. That means that something like a brownie isn't inherently fattening because it's junk food. No matter how much people wanna hate on things like sugar, saturated fat, or even artificial sweeteners, none of these things cause weight gain outside of the context of your total caloric intake. Again, the total amount of calories you consume relative to the amount of calorie your body expends is the main determinant of whether you gain or lose weight. Some foods like brownies or cookies make it easier to eat more calories compared to something like kale, but that doesn't disprove that calories matter. It simply shows that the foods you eat can influence your caloric intake if you're not tracking diligently, which is why consuming a bunch of processed foods can indeed lead to weight gain. It's also the same reason why individuals who have overall healthy dietary behaviors tend to have a lower BMI and a healthier body composition. If you're trying to lose weight and you're thinking about whether you should focus on your calories or food choices, make sure to focus on both. Eating a well-balanced, healthy diet will just make it easier for you to reduce your caloric intake, lose weight, and improve your health. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd greatly appreciate if you took a second to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Catch you guys in next week's video. Peace.